I've got another long drive ahead of me today. Uh, I'm heading up north again. I thought I'd take a little bit of time to talk this time about bed bugs. Uh, that's something that I know a lot of people kind of panic about. Uh, bed bugs themselves are very small, they're hard to find, they feed on you in the night, which can be pretty disturbing and grotesque. Um, and more often than not, uh, out of all the pests that we typically treat, bed bugs are one of the few that uh, when I go to a customer's house to do an inspection, they're the most anxious or nervous about. So they really instill a sense of panic, and because of how they operate, how they're gotten, you know, how you get them in your house, and how fast they can proliferate, and just the nature of what they do, you know, feeding on you at night, uh, it can really kind of put a panic on somebody, and they're pretty disgusting. So I thought I'd talk about that from a pest control point of view a little bit, a little bit of history, and, uh, you know, the more the merrier. I figured it'd be nice to kind of put a little more information out there for you. So, uh, bed bugs feed on humans, of course. Uh, they're closely related to another species uh, that we call bat bugs. Bat bugs and bed bugs are almost identical. Um, in fact, you, you really got to look at them under a microscope to really spot the difference. Uh, bat bugs occur out in the woods. They do really, really well. As their name implies, they feed on bats. So, they're specialized for that. In a pinch, you know, if you're camping, they can feed on humans. Uh, they don't survive very well on it, and they won't do it for very long. So bat bugs have never really been much of a problem. Uh, but you might occasionally run into some out in the woods. They're not much of a threat. Bed bugs are the version of those that have adapted towards feeding on humans, and they've done very, very well with it. There was a time uh, when bed bugs proliferated in the U.S. very, very heavily. They were everywhere. Uh, there's a reason why, you know, way back in the 20s or so, we have that, that little nursery rhyme-like song we would say to our kids, you know, uh, good night, sleep tight, don't let the bed bugs bite. Well, when I was a kid growing up, I just thought that was, you know, kind of a cute phrase people would say, what's a bed bug? You know, because they really haven't been that big of a problem in our country until recently, again. It's actually the second wave of them. So they were all over America, uh, but back then, uh, exterminators were using products like uh, DDTs, uh, Chlordane, things like that. Things that are now illegal. Um, you can't use them anymore because they, you know, yeah, they're real good at killing bed bugs and other insects, but they can also kill people. Um, and pets and things like that. They're not very, very safe. That was back in the, the kind of wild west days of pest control where they were using radiation, like radium. Uh, bad stuff you don't want in your house, and especially not anywhere near a nursery or your pets. So for good reason, those things are banned. Uh, but they did wipe out bed bugs pretty effectively. Then we started seeing them again, you know, over the last 30 years. Started off on the east coast around Florida, you know, coming in on shipping containers and things like that, on, on people. And uh, they've just slowly made their way to where now they're prevalent anywhere in the U.S., uh, but far more heavily in, in uh, certain areas and urban areas. We do have a lot of them here in Lane County. Uh, we get quite a few up in Lynn, Benton counties and uh, Douglas County. And all over Oregon they can happen. One of the problems with bed bugs is that they... So they're not really tied to hygiene or anything like that. Like certain pests, like rats, if they find your house, will do far better if your house is really unkempt there's holes in the walls so they can get in and out real easy. If there's food laying around or if you've got a lot of fruit trees that drop fruit, you don't pick that up. So that kind of, you know, not necessarily a well-kept house is real conducive to rats. And so you can actually see kind of a distinction between, you know, uh, expensive houses that are very, very clean versus houses that are not expensive, that are a little dirty. Rats are going to choose the latter. They're going to do better at those houses. They can survive better. They can reproduce more. And so then you have a pest that's kind of tied a bit towards like different areas of town uh, and different basically just mannerisms of living. Whereas bed bugs are indiscriminate. It doesn't matter. You can have the, the most perfect clean mansion or you can live in a, a small tiny hovel somewhere. It doesn't matter. If a bed bug gets in there and they start reproducing and they're feeding on you, they do just fine. It doesn't matter whether it's a clean house, a dirty house. No conditions are more conducive to it other than temperature. You know, if, if your house is 200 degrees, they won't survive in there. Uh, so that's a problem because bed bugs can strike anyone, anywhere. It has no real significance towards your economic class or station or how you live. Uh, it's just if they get in there, they're in there. The second thing about bed bugs that makes them a little disturbing is that they start feeding uh, almost immediately when they're born. They go through a gradual metamorphosis, an incomplete metamorphosis, meaning that. When they're born, they're essentially like little miniature versions of the adults. Um, the body plan's a little different, the coloring is slightly different, and they're small, real, real small, like almost can't see them small. But they're basically similar to the adults, and will only grow in size with their feedings. They have to feed in order to grow. 
because of that, if they don't feed for about a month, they'll die. You know, they will, they'll perish, they have to feed. Once they've gone through, you know, their version of puberty, you know, those later instar stages, and they become adults, then things change a little bit, they get far more hardy and resilient, and they can go, you know, a long, long time without feeding, even up to a year, uh, provided that they're not under a lot of stress from temperature or other things, you know, in a perfect environment, they can go a long time without feeding. The other problem with bed bugs is how they track you. So bed bugs can sense the carbon dioxide in your breath. And because of that, they can sense different levels of different, uh, you know, basically hormones and things like that in your system. So they know when you're asleep. They can tell by how fast you're breathing, by the smell of your breath. When you're in that stage of sleep, that's going to be just perfect for them to crawl on and take a bite without you waking up. They're very good at it. They know exactly when you're deep sleeping and when you're not. Uh, when they get hungry enough, they'll, they might even try to bite you when you're awake, but that's pretty rare. So they know where to find you because they can track you by your breath. They can tell the difference between different people. They know when you're asleep. You know, they're, they're Santa Claus. They, they know when you've been sleeping. They know when you're awake. That in, that, they're in there, that lies a problem because let's say you find out you have bed bugs in your room and the idea of them feeding on you at night is disgusting. Your first inclination is to be to get out of that room and go sleep in a different room while you're waiting for pest control to solve it or something like that. But there's a problem there. This is a bad one. Because they know who you are, if their food supply is cut off, they will eventually come looking and they'll track you to the room that you've gone to that you are now sleeping in. So if you're sleeping on the couch in the living room for a while to get away from them, they'll follow you there. They'll keep doing this until eventually they either find you or they get hungry enough to where they feed on someone else in the house. And this causes the bed bugs over a not too long period of time. It can happen really fast in a matter of a week or so that can cause them to spread into rooms that they weren't in before, which means the whole house can get infested. That's going to be not only far more costly to remove, it's going to be more difficult for a pest control guy or yourself if you're trying to do it yourself. It's just far far more difficult to get rid of them, it's more costly, and then you end up with the problem of multiple people in your house getting bed bites, uh, bed bug bites. That also causes them to be able to spread easier because they might get into some belongings that end up going on a trip to a hotel with you, which may very well be how you got them in the first place, thus completing that cycle. They can go to school, you know, on a child. It's It, it can get rough. So with bed bugs, as horrible as it sounds, the most important thing is that you stay in the room. Keep sleeping there, which is bad, I know. No, you're not going to like that. But keep doing that while pest control is working on it. Once you hire a pest control company, they'll know exactly what to do. Uh, we have a bevy of different products and things we use. Each is for specific things. There are products that are used just for bed frames. There are products that are used just for certain portions of certain mattresses. There are products used for the walls, products used for, you know, surface treatment along the floors or the walls, aerosols, traps. There are a variety of things that will be used. And they're all used for different things. For electronics, because sometimes they can get into those if they really want to, especially for the warmth. If you have a big enough infestation, they can get into, you know, a PlayStation or an Xbox. There are products just for that that are non-conductive, so you can use them in electronics. There's a lot to it, and your pest control professional is going to know all about it. He's going to have all that ready to set up, and he'll set a plan into place. Usually it involves multiple treatments. It's time-consuming. Uh, there's a lot of quality and detail that's put into it. But most importantly, that has to happen in order to make sure you get rid of them, because they're sneaky. They're hard to find. It's hard to root out all of them. And some of the pest control methodology used is going to involve waiting for them to come out of hiding. So you need residual products, products that when put down, will will have staying power. They'll last for a long time. So that, yeah, if you don't find one of the bed bugs because it's hiding in a particular spot in the box spring that a dust doesn't get to, the minute that comes out and tries to crawl anywhere, it contracts, you know, whatever pesticide, it crawls through it and touches it, and then it's dead within a day or so. So that's what you want is a long-lasting treatment. Overall, bed bugs kind of instill a lot of fear in us. We don't like that. Um, I know people that are, like, deathly afraid of ticks for the same reason. There's just something about an animal feeding on you that really bothers us, you know, as, as human beings. That's that's way in there. We don't like it. Unlike mosquitoes, however, there's a little bit of a silver lining here. Unlike something like mosquitoes or ticks, which do feed on blood and they bite you and everything like that, bed bugs aren't traditionally known for passing disease along. Uh, there have been a few studies to see if they are capable of passing along, say, uh, human immune deficiency uh, virus or anything like that or other problems you know that can happen in the blood and they haven't really been able to prove any connection there um, as disgusting as bed bugs are they are extremely picky and hygienic eaters uh, they're very clean about it whereas mosquitoes just jab away at different people and can spread disease pretty quickly uh, bed bugs have their own system like the way they feed has 
little checks and balances all the way into their gut that make sure that blood does not come out and what goes in doesn't come out. So at least there's that. They're, uh, they're very clean about how they eat. So they're not traditionally known to spread disease. You don't have to worry about that. It's just disgusting and a nuisance and leaves little red bites all over you. That can be embarrassing when you go to work and people see them. Is, I mean, it just, right from the start, somebody sees that and they know insect infestation and they think fleas, they think bed bugs, uh, or possibly spiders, you know. You know, unlike ticks or, uh, or mosquitoes, which do spread disease, or even fleas. They bite, they chew, they can spread disease. They're responsible for the Black Plague. Mosquitoes are the insect responsible for the most human deaths every year, and ticks spread Lyme disease and all sorts of problems. Um, unlike ticks and uh, mosquitoes, however, bed bugs reproduce nightly, every night, over and over and over. They'll never stop. So it's important to get a hold of that quickly. If you suspect that you have bed bugs or if you see one, it's best to hit it hard and heavy right at the start, call in pest control, have them start in immediately. Uh, in the long run, it'll go smoother, faster, easier, and less expensive as well. And that'll help settle those nerves because you're not going to like them. Once you discover you have bed bugs in your house, that's all you're going to think about. You know, night and day, you're always going to be thinking about it because it's a, a hidden nuisance that you can't fix, you know, immediately. So you'll always wonder if they're there. And the last thing you want is for them just to keep popping up month after month after month because, you know, a successful treatment wasn't on the way. The more there are, the harder it is to do that. So my advice would be definitely get it solved as quick as you can, but don't panic. You know, as disgusting as it is, you're not necessarily in danger. It's just a terrible nuisance and you're gonna to wanna to get rid of it.